Python is a great first programming language to learn, but if you already know another programming language like JavaScript, Python is still a great addition to your resume. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will begin learning the Python programming language, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. Congratulations on your decision to learn Python. It's a great first or additional programming language to learn, but don't take my word for it. I asked ChatGPT why anyone should learn Python, and here's what it had to say. Python is easy to learn and use. It has a simple and straightforward syntax, and it's an excellent language for beginners. Versatility. Python is a versatile language and it's used in a wide range of applications from web development to scientific computing and data analysis. A large and active community. Python has a large and active community of users and developers and there's a lot of resources and support available for you. Good for rapid prototyping. Python's simplicity and ease of use make it an excellent choice for rapid prototyping and job opportunities. As one of the most popular programming languages, Python's in high demand in the job market. Top five reasons, essentially, that Python is a good programming language to learn and add to your resume. And we need to start with the right tools. So go to python.org, which you should see here in my URL bar, and from there, we can download Python. So there is a Downloads tab, and when you mouse over, it should show you the current download for your operating system. As you see, I'm on Windows here, and it says we are currently at Python 3.11.2. Of course, if you're watching this in the future, there may be a newer version. Now, if you're not on Windows, you can also choose Mac OS or other platforms over here. And note here, it says Windows. Note that Python 3.9 Plus cannot be used on Windows 7 or earlier. So if you're using Windows 7 or earlier, maybe you need to go to this Windows link and find an older version of Python to run, which should still allow you to complete this Python tutorial. So for now, click on the download for your operating system, download and install Python, and then come back to the video. Now that you've got Python downloaded and installed, we're going to install a code editor. And there are many different ones to choose from. My choice is Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to use it throughout the following Python lessons as I build the course. So to follow along with me, I recommend that you download and install Visual Studio Code for your operating system. Again, the website should identify which platform you're on, Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. And I'm at code dot visual studio dot com and then download the version for your operating system and install that after you install go ahead and open visual studio code and then come back to the video and now with visual studio code open on your machine you should see some type of welcome screen like i have here you can go ahead and click the x to close that we won't need that but afterwards, we need to install the Python extension for Visual Studio Code. Now on the left hand, we see the activity bar and we need to click the extensions icon right over here on the left. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to search for Python and we should see Python from Microsoft. If you click on that, you can see Python, IntelliSense, linting, debugging, and other things that are available. Now, I've already installed this extension, so I have uninstall and disable. You will need to go ahead and click install that should show up here where I have uninstall and install this extension for Visual Studio Code. It should not take long at all. After you do that, you can go ahead and close out of this. You can click the file explorer icon over here just to show the file tree again for whatever folder that you currently have Visual Studio Code open in. I should mention that I created a folder. You can see I have lesson one as the name of my folder and there are currently no files in it whatsoever. So my Visual Studio Code is empty. My folder is empty over here. Now in Visual Studio Code, we're going to open the command palette. And to do that, I'm going to press Control, Shift and the letter P. If you're using a Mac, when I say control, you probably need to press command. So either command shift in the letter P or control shift in the letter P. And that will open a command palette. And you can see my top choice says Python select interpreter. That may not be your top choice. So you can just start by typing the word Python and seeing all of the different commands that come up. And you could type all of this out or you could scroll through and find the select interpreter. 
And once you do that, it's going to show the version of Python that you currently have installed. You can see I have Python 3.11.2, 64-bit, and I'm just going to select that. Once I've made that selection, I can then open a terminal window and there's a terminal menu here at the top. When I click that, you can go to new terminal or you can also just use the shortcut, which is what I usually do. A new terminal is control shift and the back tick or just control back tick to open a terminal that may not be new. Say if you already had it open, say I could type something here like my name, which won't really amount to anything. If I were to try to run my name, for example, that wouldn't work. But if I close it and then press control and back tick, it opens up the same terminal, not a new terminal. So that is the difference. Control and back tick opens an existing terminal if one exists and control shift back tick opens a new terminal. And you can have more than one terminal. If you click this plus button here, you can see now I've got two terminals open. Mine says bash because that is my default terminal. However, you might have other choices. On Windows, there's PowerShell, there's a command prompt. I'm using git bash. If you don't have that installed, that's okay. You can use a command prompt. And now I have a command prompt terminal window open and you can see the difference over here. One's named command and one's named bash. So either would work and on Mac or Linux, it could be different for you as well. But now we need to verify our Python installation. So on Windows, I'm going to type pi, just py, dash three, and then dash dash version. Now that's for Windows. If I'm on Mac or Linux, I need to type python three, then dash dash version. And that would work on Mac or Linux. And then you press enter. So I'm going to go back to what I need to type for Windows. Just keep that in mind. Anytime you see me type pi on the command line, like I am now, if you're on Mac or Linux, you need to type Python 3. So it could be just a little different. Now I'm going to type dash dash version and press enter. And it gives us the version of Python that we currently have installed. I have Python 3.11.2. Now we can drag this window for a little more room also. So I'll drag this up to make this com command prompt or terminal because I'm not really using a command prompt. I'm in git bash, but whichever terminal window you have open, you can make bigger by dragging it like I just did. Now I'm just going to type pi. Once again, on Mac and Linux, type Python 3 instead. But now I'll just press enter with nothing after that. And now you can see we have something different here. We can actually run Python commands right here at this prompt. You see the three arrows. This is the Python REPL, and that stands for read, evaluate, print, loop. And we can just put in a command. Python, for example, can be a calculator. So I can press two plus two, press enter, and it outputs four. I can also do something with a string like my name, which I had typed earlier, but let's do this. I'll say name equals, Dave. And now I'll press enter. Notice there's nothing output currently, but if I type name, it's going to output my name. We assigned the string Dave to a variable called name. And so then when we typed name, it output the string Dave. Now it's good to know that we can run commands at the prompt like this, but this is not how we're usually going to provide commands to the interpreter. We are going to do that with files and essentially creating a file is a bunch of commands put into one file that we tell Python to execute. Now, Python is not a low level language and a low level language is more machine oriented. Instead, Python's a high level language and it uses an interpreter. And this allows us to write code, which is easier for people to read. So in other words, Python is more user friendly to read and to write. So for example, when I want to get out of this I'm just going to type quit and I need to put parentheses after and press enter. And now we have quit our REPL environment and we're just back to our normal prompt here. Now there are several ways to close this terminal window. Previously you saw me click the X, that works. And then if I wanted to reopen it and still have this here, I could do that with control and back tick. However, I could click the trash can and then that will get rid of this window. And if I were to open it, this stuff wouldn't be here any longer. So I'm just going to click X in case I want to bring that back up. So I mentioned creating a file and we can do that a couple of ways in Visual Studio Code. One would be to go over here to this file tree that we see on the left and click the plus button by the file icon. That would create a new file and then we could name it. 
I can also just press Control N for a shortcut, and that starts a new file, which is what I'm going to do now. And then I'm going to say something like greeting equals, and I'll put hello world, because that's something just traditional that you have to have anytime you're learning a new programming language. And after that, then I'm going to say print, and then I'm going to pass in that greeting variable that we created above on the previous line. Now notice this file is untitled and it has a dot here, meaning we haven't saved this yet. So I'm going to press Control S. I could go to the file menu and from there I could also choose save or save as. I'm just going to do Control S and it's still going to ask me what to name the file and I'm going to save it in my lesson one folder. So I'm going to name this hello and then I want it to end with the .py extension. Right now it says save as type plain text. That is not what I want. I want to find the Python extensions here inside of the file types and make sure I'm saving as type Python, which you can see it can have different types. I'm using the .py. So I'll click save. Now I've saved my Python file type, hello.py. And you can see Visual Studio Code now acknowledges this is a Python file type and it is color coded part of the code. So the string has a different color and the command here for print has a different color. The parentheses are also in a different color. So it makes it a little easier to read the code. And now that we've created this file, we can run this command or commands, whatever we would have in the file, we can tell Python to execute in three different ways. One is to go to this play button that we see over here in the top right of Visual Studio Code. Now there's a little caret here that I'm going to click it gives us a drop down. I'm going to choose run Python file. And when I do that, it opens up this terminal window. Notice it's named Python over here now. It's not the one we had previously named bash. So I just clicked the trash can to get rid of that. But here is what it ran when we told it to run the file. It put this command and this said exactly where the Python executable is. And then after that, we have this other long string here that says exactly where the hello.py file is. And then we get the output from that file that says hello world. Now, when we were to, if we were to run this file ourselves, we would not have to type all of this. Although we could copy and paste this in, we can use a shortcut or two for this. One, we already know that we can just call Python in Windows with py, Again, Mac and Linux, type Python 3. After that, a space. And since we're already in this lesson one directory that I have, or folder you could call, I said directory, but it's the same thing. If you've created a folder with a different name, you would be in that folder. So if you're already in that folder and you see your file over here, I can just type in hello dot py and now we're telling python to run that hello file that will accomplish the same thing that we saw executed above when we used the play button up above so now i'm going to press enter and we get the same output hello world also we could go to the file tree and right click i believe in mac that would be a command click and then we scroll down here and we find run current or run Python file in terminal. So I'll select that and it runs it again, just like when we did the play button. So you see these extra commands. So three different ways to run our Python file. So congratulations again on getting started with Python. You've created your first file. You've got it all set up on your computer and we've got much more to learn ahead. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.